today we will talk about uh, uh, a very influential article of uh, Peter Singer, Famine, Affluence and Morality. Uh, now many of, uh, mo uh, when both of you or when uh, you have been uh, doing philosophy, uh, there has been this urge that, well, where does it connect to the world out there? So, particularly in ethics, when we have been talking, we have been talking about uh, uh, a lot of moral theories, but where does this connect to the world out there? And this uh, essay is a crucial example of uh, uh, how a philosopher's work uh, in, in uh, the philosophical domain has influenced the uh, world out there. So, uh, it was a very uh, crucial uh, article. and. Uh, uh, it did get in a lot of funding and uh, resources, and uh, unlike unlike uh, the criticism that well many many uh, philosophical articles end up in their journals without moving uh, anything in the world. So uh, the context of this uh, uh, the context of this article is well it was written in 1971. Uh, this there is a situation, there is famine in East Bengal or uh, now Bangladesh. Uh, there was this formation of Bangladesh, independence from Pakistan, constant poverty, cyclone and civil war. So, a sudden high intensity demand on a fledgling government with very limited resources and located in one of the resource starved regions of the world. In no way the author uh, understands the situation to be fatalistic. And uh, so, what do others do? What is the crucial point? What others do? Okay. So, now, uh, before we uh, take on, since we have had a preliminary reading of this article, uh, let us come up with uh, what has been your, how have, uh, how moved have you been with this uh, piece? What, what difference has it, uh, what do you think it is, uh, uh, how, what has been the it, it is a jolt to the world community, to individuals everywhere, to start donating for this situation that we have in 1971. How would you react to it, if this is a situation then and there? How would you react, reading this article, if you were in 1971? Right. Okay. Let's take this situation one on one. Would you like to add something to this? Okay. Not now. Now, what uh, few crucial questions that are being raised by uh, uh, Singer is that what do the affluent, if at all, owe anything to the uh, um, lesser affluent or uh, tragedy struck? Now, um, as as uh, philosophy students, what would you think that? Is this a question that is relevant, or uh, when asked to a philosopher, or is this just uh, a clarion call, or what do the affluent owe to the lesser affluent, or the tragedy struck? to the rest of the world. 
Okay, interesting. Now, uh, uh, hmm, which is not raised by Singer in this article, but if you would like to read into it that well, um, Singer takes a starting point. The starting point being that well, there is uh, tragedy uh, in a particular part of the world, and there is affluence in a particular part of the world, and that the affluent therefore, uh, what are the, what is the rationale that goes behind them to uh, donate to the uh, ones who are tragedy struck. Now, interesting. Now, if you trace the uh, genealogy or the history of affluence, one very dominant world view is that well, uh, the resources in the world are finite, and that is being uh, uh, that is being just skew distributed in a skewed manner, and therefore, uh, it is uh, uh, it is just a matter of earlier utilization of ancestors that. Uh, certain resources have accumulated in one part of the world, and thereby causing a scarcity on the other part of the world. Now, to this worldview, there is also a uh, retort that well, uh, affluence is also a result of human effort, and uh, where effort has been more, and where uh, 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 say uh, thinking has been cherished, and uh, ways of affluence have been realized, there has simply been much more. Uh, uh, affluence than in regions which have not uh, uh, exhibited these traits in uh, societies. How would you react to that? Okay, but uh, 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 let's tackle one question by uh, one by one. Uh, the first question that well, uh, your claim is that well. Uh, fundamental question being is what to the rich or to the poor. Okay, let's have that uh, uh, so that our focus remains on that. The first question that what I, I would read in as uh, what uh, uh, Singer asks that well, what to the rich owe to the poor. Now, one view is that well, uh, this this notion of owe is uh, actually a notion of uh, uh, repayment, because uh, somehow uh, the affluence has accumulated by uh, starving certain regions of the world. And therefore, it is not a moral 
uh, owing, but actually a you know, almost uh, legal owing, because we, uh, because the affluent uh, have cornered in more of the resources than uh, the less affluent. But what about, uh, uh, this is one uh, way of perceiving the world, that where resources are finite. Right, because this is in fact, almost the border of, uh, uh, on uh, economic thinking, that there are two ways of perceiving uh, the economy. One is that, uh, that the world has a fixed uh, resource economy, and it is only a game of distributing uh, the resources from one region to the other. The other way is that, uh, resources or goods can be generated. So, it is uh, not that the net uh, uh, wealth of the world remains the same, and uh, uh, it is redistributed, but anyone exhibiting entrepreneurship and uh, uh, knowledge skills and uh, traits that are valued, generates resources, and therefore generates affluence. So, we have had one view, would, would, would you agree with it, or you? Hmm. When you are talking about the CSR or any uh, group, this group, they are thinking, not only thinking about its own development, they are thinking about the environmental resilience or the welfare of the society. So, but why should one uh, or, or the affluent think of the welfare of the society? Because uh, maybe uh, in his personal part of view, he has uh, wants to grow his own group or uh, his life. The second way, when he is uh, staying within a society, he has also a responsibility to uh, bear something. And the, what is the basis of that responsibility? Because one view is that the basis of that responsibility is because the affluence has come from uh, starved uh, regions. But uh, what if uh, we hold a worldview that well, everyone has generated their own affluence roughly, and therefore there is no. Uh, legal owing in that manner. Is there, what, what is the basis of the moral owe? I think, uh, when we are using the FT1, that means, at least, uh, we should donate something from our own resource. Hmm. But, what, what is the basis of that should? Because, what do you hold? That, uh, the world order has uh, fixed in resources, which is distributed, or uh, we ge uh, generate our own resources? Because, if you think that, again, it will get for the poor. Or that you have become rich at the expense of somebody else. No, I when I'm donating something, that does not mean I'm thinking about my uh, like material things. I'm thinking there like it is here. I'm talking of the human being rather than the. Material. True, true. But what first question we are t uh, uh, dealing with is that how did I uh, or how did a nation or a culture or a country become wealthy? They did come become by. Uh, uh, stealing or starving another region of the world, or wealth can be created independent of uh, a relative poverty. The second one, interesting. We have two parallel views here, that uh, of course, we need to uh, uh, engage with views, which each of these views, because this will determine whether this rich owe to the poor, uh, is uh, either a legal owing or a moral owing. Okay. Right. Okay. If you take a look at the slide right now, that uh, it basically describes the situation that is uh, on. That well, uh, that particular time, which was that at an individual le level, people have not responded in the magnitude required. There were some exceptions, of course. At the governmental level, assistance has not come to the massive levels required for sustained assistance. And a comparison of the expenditure of the governments, and that is uh, uh, taken as the indicator of the. Uh, reflection about uh, uh, their policies. So, uh, if you remember, if you if you remember the example of the Concorde, that the, how the British government spends more on the development of a supersonic jet than the alleviation of suffering. 
So, these were the relative standards given, but the general questions that are raised as I see is that well, uh, there is almost uh, a, a perpetual situation of the world, where there is suffering and affluence coexisting uh, with not enough transfer of resources taking place. So, there is suffering, uh, suffering and there is affluence, both existing at the same time in the same world, but enough transfer of resources not taking place. That is the prick that has uh, uh, made Singer uh, uh, write almost an uh, article in a very aggressive tone. So, and targeted not just to philosophical audience, but to the world uh, at large. Uh, and the relatively well resourced priorita prioritize the utilization of their resources, and Singer finds fault with this prioritization, both at the individual and the collective level. So, those who are uh, relatively uh, well resourced, they find a problem. Let us have the slide on, yes sir. Uh, they have the, uh, they find fault with this prioritization, both at the. Hmm. So, I think uh, it is not possible in every time, because uh, if you look to India, then the situation will be different. If you are talking about the USA or UK, I think uh, they are more active than the suffering, because uh, they are so active that they are trying to eradicate their suffering from the society. Yes, but when they are talking about uh, the uh, situation of the world, so as a world order, as a world community, as a citizen of the world, you have pockets of affluence, pockets of scarcity. And perhaps the situation has not changed uh, uh, since, since uh, the time of recorded history. There has always been a, uh, al almost an extreme existing. So, this uh, difference, so even for a prosperous uh, uh, first world uh, country, there is also a uh, food starved uh, third world country. So, that is what uh, Singer wants us to reflect that, uh, why is it not triggering the kind of reaction it should trigger, what he expects to be uh, to trigger that well. There is affluence and uh, uh, you value your supersonic jet more than, uh, more than the elevation of poverty that is where the uh, question arises. So, well, first question what do the rich owe to the poor, we can find well uh, two strains of answers that one that they legally owe and uh, another is that they owe on human grounds or uh, uh, because, because they share a common humanity and it is because um, our fundamental nature to be uh, uh, touched by uh, the suffering of the other by catharsis or by whatever means that we ought to be concerned. Because, if you notice well, like Singer starts his uh, article by saying that suffering is an evil, and those who uh, disagree with it, he does not even engage with that. So, in fact, he takes a very rigid uh, uh, applied uh, uh, or in the world tone uh, in this article. He does not enter or he, uh, or he closes the possibility of discussing about uh, any esoterical or uh, metaphysical claims about uh, why uh, uh, other world or uh, how starving or death is not really an evil, and there have been many philosophical views about it. This clearly rules it out of this zone of the article. So, when he talks about this fundamental assumption that uh, I begin with the assumption that suffering and death from the lack of food, shelter, and medical care are bad. So, this is uh, I think most people will agree. And, uh, uh, and he shall, he does not bring this into a contextual view, but um, as, as uh, philosophy students, w what do you think, if you want to contest, uh, to contest the claim over here, what would you like to possible reason at all, what would you read into it. Yes, but we are we are just questioning this assumption that, uh, for the sake of questioning that this uh, what uh, reads on the first line of the paragraph starting in this page is that I begin with the assumption that suffering and death from the lack of food, shelter, and medical care are bad. Uh, well, about uh, about the uh, generic uh, assumption that suffering from death, uh, suffering and death from lack of food, shelter and medical care are bad. 
Is that a bad? That's a moral claim that this, these are bad. Yes, they are obligated, but I am asking that if somebody wants to question this assumption or what is, uh, how do you uh, debate this assumption, how, how do you problematize it, what is he denying? Hmm. When he is talking about food, shelter and medical care are bad, hmm. in the philosophical outlook we can't say that these things are bad, because. Oh, he is saying that suffering and death are bad. Okay. Uh, come What is per se wrong with uh, f suffering and death coming from this? Well, okay. Let me just uh, briefly put that. What he is perhaps, from what I can read, that he is denying is that we, he engages in no talk about fatalism. That when fatalism claims that well, and, and uh, esoteric theories that well, uh, we all go through necessary because all religions. This is uh, I would read a very anti-religious uh, view in uh, this claim that he is making that well all suffering that we encounter are not sufferings that we deserve and uh, death is not a liberation from that suffering. So, he keeps the entire box of such esoteric metaphysical or religious claims out of the situation. He takes life as finite and he takes uh, human actions that can make a difference. So, I would read into this as a complete denial of uh, fatalism that if there is suffering and death from the lack of food and shelter and medical care, they are bad because they are preventable and they are not the result of my previous or earlier actions and they are not definitely not a test for me to overcome. The, the, the standpoint the singer mentions? Yes, yes, it is to be welcomed. I am just saying what by, by refusing to argue which line does he stop arguing. So, uh, when he, because he does not, uh, if you read, he does not deny that there will be any problems with such this assumption, but he does not find it worthwhile. So, I would want, want to bring li to light, what are these possible problems. So, uh, perhaps most of us would not uh, agree with it, but there can be exceptions and these are the kind of exceptions that come out to be. I have a Okay, now, if if uh, of, um, if it's uh, two ways of looking at it. First, is uh, the suffering a cause of a prior, uh, the effect of a prior cause, one, and second is human free will granted. So, because if human free will is granted, then uh, one can try to alleviate sufferings. But on the other hand, if human free will is not granted, then it is it's almost a completely fatalistic order where uh, uh, suffering is inevitable and it is the result of uh, prior actions. I can see a very strong uh, critique of uh, um, Indian religious views that occur, uh, which say that well, uh, whatever is happening is a result of your past actions. So, one is critiquing that and second, uh, uh, tragedy or, uh, uh, or, or famine, affluence and natural disasters and man-made uh, problems, why do they occur in certain part of the world and not in the other part of the world. Or why are, why is uh, the basis of affluence is not chance, the basis of affluence is effort. So, it is a very uh, positivistic uh, reading of uh, the world order that well, uh, implicitly if, if I read into it is that 
the world order, the way it is, the, uh, the division between affluence and poverty is not random. It is a result of human action, and thereof. So, just as uh, 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 fatalism, uh, uh, there is bad faith, there it can be good faith. So, is either way. So, what the resources have implicitly, or uh, the prosperous have implicitly, comes from their own efforts, and uh, the uh, tragedies that uh, are faced are also to be sorted by um, uh, the world community at large. Okay. So, let us, yeah. One being uh, natural natural resources, and what would you like to term the other? Wealth. Wealth okay. Uh, well, uh, uh, I don't. Of course, P is, uh, Singer does not make an, any exclusive claim about it. But uh, if I am to read into it, well, he is perhaps uh, not making such a clear distinction. He is, in fact, finding one uh, leading to the other. So. Uh, perhaps, uh, uh, natural resources and wealth are tied up, but then perhaps that will, that is from my reading of Peter's or Singer's others, other works. From this particular work, I, I think we cannot draw any claim about uh, what he is trying to put forth. Okay. But of course, there are exceptions, where uh, uh, affluence has uh, uh, been attained over uh, uh, place, uh, uh, places and cultures, which are very scarcely blessed with natural resources. So, that can of course, be seen that uh, it is continuous, but in certain cases, and, and certain uh, places blessed with natural resources are still not. Uh, affluent enough. But anyway, I think uh, for the purpose of this article, because he makes no implicit claim about it in this article, uh, we can let it be for the time being, and get into what uh, uh, debatable claims, or what problematic claims are made in this article. So, if you take a look at this slide about uh, assumptions. Well, the first one, we just talked about. And, uh, they seem to be very intuitively binding claims. But, uh, uh, let us see how, uh, uh, and how and why, uh, these are binding, and why do they not translate into action. So, uh, if you look at the uh, second assumption that is listed, that well, if it is in our uh, power to prevent something bad from happening, 
without thereby sacrificing anything of comparable moral importance, we ought morally to do it. This is a clearly a, uh, absolutely a utilitarian claim, that well, if we can prevent something, in fact, uh, pre prevent something bad from happening, without thereby sacrificing anything of comparable moral importance. So, there is a kind of a uh, moral calculus here, I give you uh, some time to go through it. Yes, also a mild version of his thesis, yes. And he argues that even the milder version mm-hmm. Yes. Okay, can we proceed? Okay, right. So, uh, uh, well, uh, what is the problem here? The problem when you see uh, uh, Singer makes this claim that, well, uh, this seems to be very intuitively obvious and probably uh, most of us would agree to it, but why this uh, uh, supposedly obvious claim does not bring an action. So, when we talk about that, well, uh, if it is in our power to prevent something bad from happening, uh, without thereby sacrificing anything of comparable moral importance, we ought morally to do it. So, this is the moral calculus that the utilitarian uh, talks about it. So, uh, talks uh, talk about that, if you weigh the uh, uh, positive good, that the goods that come out of a decision, and if it outweighs the uh, suffering or evil or that comes out of it, then you choose an action that brings about overall happiness over suffering. So, that is a very, that is the generic principle of which this is a version, where it talks about preventing something bad from happening, instead of generating happiness. So, uh, when it says that well, uh, when uh, Singer says that well, to prevent something bad from happening, without sacrificing anything. So, this is where the moral calculus is. So, because when you are transferring resources, there is uh, a scarcity that you are voluntarily embracing, and that anything should be of comparable moral importance, and therefore, we ought morally to do it. This is perhaps the principle that he uh, talks about initially. Uh, now, would we find any, any uh, the, this principle again uh, appeals, but it implies great changes if applied. So, what are these changes? First, these changes are changes of proximity, that uh, the factor of proximity, that if uh, suffering or a takes place, um, both physically close to me, or to a person uh, re, uh, closely related to me, then it should not make a difference in my judgment. So, my proximity to a person or the suffering, whether it is spatial proximity or relational proximity, uh, will not make a difference on my uh, effort, or on an individual's or an agent's effort to alleviate that suffering. Now, let us look at this first uh, little consequence of a very, uh, uh, almost an obvious principle, that proximity is irrelevant. How uh, irrelevant is proximity? Now, there are various examples, if you look into the world out there. Let us say beggars. Now, if a beggar comes to you, and asks for arms, uh, depending on the state of the beggar, he gets, uh, or does not get the arms, or however, whatever you decide to do. Now, you know that, uh, there is uh, similar scarcity, and uh, uh, problems in other parts of the world, or other parts of the place you live in. But, uh, perhaps most of us do not make an active effort, to contribute. Now, if we ag agree, uh, uh, let us have the slide please. Huh? If we agree at the uh, principle that, uh, uh, Singer is putting forth, why do we uh, find that, in uh, application, proximity should not matter, but uh, perhaps does matter. Let us have views on this, proximity for anything that, uh, how much you would uh, uh, support for, uh, uh, suffering uh, uh, family member, and to a stranger. Is there some uh, error in the principle, or is there something which, uh, the, the hidden component of the principle, that uh, is not palatable with the way human beings work. Mm -hmm. uh, I 
perhaps human uh, decision making does uh, factor in proximity, but should it? Yes, but th that is the whole question that well in the same uh, city or town you have uh, very affluent pockets and we have uh, uh, very uh, poor pockets. So, uh, penury and affluence simultaneously existing and no matter how much distance there be. So, when you talk about neutrality, what Singer is asking is that uh, there should be absolute neutrality. So, you are neutral to the sufferings of not only people proximate or places proximate uh, to you, but also places which are far away both spatially and relationally to you. So, why does uh, uh, the common attitude that well a suffering in my region, uh, I will contribute more and a suffering in somewhere else in the world, perhaps I will contribute less if not nothing. So, would single uh, singer call that moral or immoral? He would call it immoral, yes. Yes, go ahead. Who is proximate to us? Hmm. If we help someone who is proximate to us, in some way, um, uh, they would probably return the favor to us. That's what, that could be one of the considerations. Um, whereas if we help someone who is really far from us, uh, we would bring about a change in their lives, but uh, it would be done uh, very impersonally. Okay. So, in fact, I see this as uh, uh, Singer's um, paradigmatic following of, uh, of the Kantian paradigm, that uh, uh, where uh, neutrality even to the point that you are, uh, you hold a known person at uh, par with an unknown person and you just value the suffering uh, that is to be uh, alleviated and not whose suffering. So, that. Hmm.
that is correct. Okay. That is an interesting uh, observation brought about that well, uh, uh, the principle may appeal to us rationally, but uh, being psychological animals proximity cannot be underestimated. So, we are bound to have uh, neutrality uh, is, is almost a mechanistic notion. Where, whereas, we are psychological beings and proximity does matter to us. In fact, if you look at the entire domain of uh, uh, seeking uh, charity and uh, campaigning for charity, we try to put hard hitting images that will elicit some response from the viewer. It is uh, whereas, a uh, text describing the detail of uh, the situation will not ascribe, uh, will not uh, elicit that kind of a uh, response. So, we, we put in hard hitting images that will bring about or uh, elicit in that uh, some kind of a psychological connect with the uh, potential donor to uh, bring out uh, a donation. So, uh, here uh, Singer is not taking into account the psychological uh, characters or tendencies. Yes, Okay, interesting. That's that's a very, uh, in fact, uh, uh, a powerful trend in explaining human behavior by the biology we are based on. So, uh, even evolutionary ethics, for that matter, survival ethics, all tend to uh, seek a biological explanation for our behavior. But that's uh, interesting. For the years spent together, will that not uh, 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 nullify our neutrality for uh, a person with whom we have spent years together or known for a long time? versus a person whom we do not know. So, we are, uh, uh, we want to be uh, uh, rationally, we want to be people who alleviate suffering depending on the uh, quantum of suffering, but psychologically we value uh, or we, we uh, are more concerned or hurt by the suffering of proximate people than people whom we are not proximate with. An essential factor that uh, uh, perhaps Singer is uh, not uh, of course, may be aware of, but is missing out in what is the uh, uh, claim of this article. But perhaps Singer's answer to this would be that this is exactly what we need to overcome if we want to have a uh, uh, better world order. So, uh, anything more on proximity that you would like to add? Okay. That uh, yes, that if we owe our affluence to others, and therefore we uh, uh, owe support in the times of need, then it uh, is. Uh, yes, uh, connected or not, and and that further uh, nullifies, makes it almost a legal requirement. Uh, yes, that it makes. It, it need not even uh, go to the level of the moral call, but it goes to the level of a simple quid pro quo legal call. That well, it is like an employer looking into the uh, health benefits of the of an employee. Would you like to see that as? Aspect comes in addition to the moral aspect, and that moral 
aspect is uh, that also is different from the model going in the second view because it's it's not they are not morally obligated to help because they are humans like us but because uh, we have taken something okay it's not simply legal. Okay, it also has a pervading moral basis, but it is not restricted to being a moral call only. Okay, it's is to be legal also. You'd like to pan, huh? The world as one community. Um, okay, interesting because uh, this also raises the whole question of uh, why do governments give aids? Why do world bodies give aids? So uh, there is so much of world aid taking place now. There have been various readings of uh, why should uh, any any country or government or collective aid another. So, it can be both at the uh, level of nations, it can be at the level of societies, at families, at individuals, at country levels. Why does one assist the other? So, does it be, uh, does its call come from be, uh, we being the citizens of a common world or uh, perhaps it being it comes from uh, common human nature or it comes from uh, a sense of owing that In fact, not just society, well he would be calling well uh, humanity per se, because if you look at the second uh, little implication that comes from uh, Singer's principle, that uh, the actions assumed or actual of others similarly placed ought not to make a difference to one's actions. So, that is again a call for um, impersonal or uh, neutrality, that well uh, if there is a problem. And the example that he talks about that suppose there is a, a child uh, drowning in a pond. Now, if you are the only one passing through that makes uh, does uh, that increase your obligation uh, when compared to uh, their people various people passing by the pond. You have the same, but again uh, what would you opine up on it that according to Singer that this uh, other similarly placed should not affect your decision making. So, but as modern behavioral economists would try to bring forth that what you choose uh, is essentially influenced by what others in your uh, by how many people are there around you and how many people uh, what choices they make and that crucially influences you. So, uh, singers demand that well there is something uh, that we uh, negate the others around us in making a choice. Um, is it uh, almost an inhuman claim? Okay. So, later I can think, because uh, when you talking about the second fact, fact, it is depends on the time or it is up to you to decide the letter. Mm -hmm. The first fact is the most necessary or it is an essential uh, fact 
know that we have to uh, take the decision. We are not going away because we have three choices and two single tools and three choices in that form. Yes, go ahead. Contingent factors should not play a role. Okay, so the very f claim that he makes is that numbers lessen obligation. I think that is how he puts it over here, that do numbers actually lessen obligation. or whatever problem there is. Um. Then the amount that each one has to contribute is reduced. Okay. But it does not uh, affect the obligation per se. Mm -hmm. okay. 